Hello, hello. This is the board that I've been working on, the UPD 7220 card, the newer one. And really what I wanted to show today was the simulator for it. Let me bring the source code in. That basically uh, simulates this card and it's, it's pretty useful. So let me go ahead and launch it. Now, what you'll notice is that it actually loaded the KiCad file into the, the simulator. So that's very convenient if you use KiCad. Um, basically, this was designed to help me help me develop this board because the version that I made previously of this board, as you can see, this is a revision two. The previous version did not work. And instead of doing a zillion board revs, I decided that I would spend an all nighter building the simulator. And why did I not use a simulator? That's a great question. Just because. Anyway, you'll see we have Arduino open. What this is doing is it's waiting for the simulator to connect. So we can click serial bus interface and we can actually connect to the Arduino. So it'll behave as if the Arduino were connected to a real card. All right. So we'll go ahead and do that and it gets that. Okay. So now essentially it's, it's waiting for the simulation to run so that it can actually initialize the card, right? Because this is trying to run at the same speed that it would in real life, except like I've obviously scaled down to the, to the time step size, right? But anyway, then you'll see here we have this VGA monitor. So the simulator actually emulates the, the tries to read the VGA signals. There's some limitations to this, but it does, it actually works quite well despite that. Now you'll see up in the corner, there's this little white dot that shows where the uh, CRT screen would be sending the uh, electron beam at that time on the display. And this does show the back front porch, all that. So you can see everything. Let's run it. All righty. So you can see the Arduino is doing stuff now. So it's going to try to render a frame and you can see that essentially this is, this is drawing, it's working, it's doing the VGA. And it's really cool because we can see what all the chips are doing on the board. It's kind of hard to see, it's clipped, but this is actually the a settings register that controls the way the card behaves. This is the VRAM up here and you can see it changing. There you go. So it's rendering something. So that's something that this guy just did. Now in the simulator, there's, you know, it's hard to simulate something perfectly. So you see that there's some, uh, lines in it really this should be all blue the reason for that is, is is there are some bugs in the way that the arduino writes to the, the the simulated data bus but really overall it works quite well now what the arduino here is doing um is it's rotating the uh, pitch of the camera for the 3D rendering, uh, every you know every time it draws a frame, I think by about 10 degrees. So you'll actually see after enough frames that the oh well there it just happened <laughs> uh, that the world starts to come into the image. It's actually rendering as if this was a real monitor. It's just slowed down because the we can't run these chips in real time. But anyway, we are running the simulator. You can see like we can actually see what's on the screen. So this is really fun. Like it's simulating the actual chips. Now I'm going to take a moment to open up the, the source code. You can see that we have essentially a library of components here, right? And they're organized on this chip library. You can see all the chips. So it's actually simulating these exact chips. It's not like it's not like it's simulating what the card is supposed to do. It's actually simulating that. And you can even see that I've included the different delays and timings for all the chips. And I'll show you that now, how essentially it, it's simulating the actual timing of it. And by the way, if this is sounding like a sales pitch, I swear it is not, this, this is just open source. Like I'm just excited about this. I genuinely just think this is cool. Hopefully you find it useful. Let's just load whatever I had last that I was looking at. All right, start it. There we go. So now we can actually see all the signals that are going by, although this is really fast. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but let's turn off high speed mode. We run it slower. 
hide speed mode runs the simulation in a separate thread than the uh, than, uh, swing. Uh, so it is able to run a lot faster. Here it's running with a swing timer, so it's way slower. But yeah, so you can see of all the signals. And if you were to look really closely, you can even see the delay uh, in some of these signals that the timing is not lining up exactly. So you see that with the ALE latch here. So this, uh, when this clock goes high, uh, it takes all this time for ALE latch to go high. And that's a timing uh, issue due to the, um, I think I'm simulating a Z7220 here. So I think it's 80 nanoseconds. And this is sort of based off of the like Xilinx tools, whatever their color scheme is, because that's what I'm used to. But anyway, this is what I've been working on. <laughs> I fixed the board design with this simulator. I was able to figure out what worked and what didn't. And uh, yeah, so it's fun. It's working. I wanted to take the second half of this video to describe how the simulator is working. So I kind of started by, by parsing the KiCad files, and this is basically just a really, really simple uh, parser for um, a KiCad PCB. It's not using S expressions the way it's supposed to. It's like this class is just a class that exists somewhere. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is this is where I started with this. Once I had the file, the KiCad files parsed, um, I was able to actually, you know, see what nets were connected and start to simulate stuff and see what kind of stuff that I needed to simulate. So if we go to the design uh, file, so this basically the output of the KiCad file uh, of the KiCad parser is a design. Okay. Now the design is where the simulation happens. Um, really, this should probably be separated into separate files, but I have not done that yet. But this essentially, uh, so this is the, the design class. One thing to understand about the simulator, it's not designed for analog stuff whatsoever. It is only designed for digital, and it all works using bit manipulation. That's part of how I'm able to get the speed that I want, and that's generally just the simulator works with raw ones and zeros on your machine. All right, so let's let's start with how the simulator sort of starts out, okay? So show this, I'm just gonna close my sim and we're gonna open it again. And it starts paused. What you see here is pretty much every pin is initialized to this blue, which means high impedance. There's no value attached to it yet. Um, the green ones at this stage are all going to be the five volt line, okay? So just initialize the five volt line to true, and then the ground is initialized to false, right? And we start with this chip here, or rather this oscillator um, clock line, and that's where things are gonna start. So if we step it, uh, you'll see it initializes some more stuff, but then all of a sudden it sends the clock signal. And this kind of kickstarts the entire, this is an important part of kickstarting the entire thing, okay? So if you step it, it basically, each step is not a time slice. That's not how a simulator works. Um, it updates when a chip is scheduled to update. So it's scheduling all the updates for the chips. That's how it works. And I'll kind of show you that in a second. But yeah, so you see the clock line moving, but the, each chip, you know, it, it's it's, scheduling the propagation delay. And that's why you see it takes so many steps for everything to initialize because it's literally propagating the signals through all the chips. And different chips also have different delays, so that's a contributing factor as well, right? And you can see that the UPD is not even initial, uh, it's kind of initialized, but you know, it, it's pretty slow if you do it step by step, time step. So anyway, you can see how I had initialized all the pins, right? How, how I mentioned that was initialized, that's the function that does that. That just happened to be on it. Cool. Anyway, that's not the function. This is the function we care about, tick, okay? It's essentially, if there's nothing to do, right? So if there's nothing scheduled, there's nothing queued in the simulator, 
or the next thing to do is after when the clock should go, when the clock should tick, then we're going to simulate the system clock. Okay. Now, one problem with this design is currently I can only use one system clock. However, if that clock drives, in my case, a counter, right? So that's right here. This counter chip uh, is connected to the oscillator that drives all the clocks, right? So if you have a clock generator IC of some kind, it'll simulate that. So, but you just can have only one oscillator right now. There's probably a very easy fix for this, but I just haven't put much thought into it yet. Now, as far as how it's doing that, um, it tries to detect the, the system clock at startup, and if it can't find it, then it'll just look for one. That's essentially what this is saying. So it gets the model for the, the clock, um, and I'll, let's, let's open the model real quick, oscillator. And it basically just is uh, simulating what the clock should do. It's, it's just saying how long should we take before the next tick. That's what all this is about and inverting the system clock signal. So it's very simple. So it does all these calculations to see when it should take the system clock next and what the current value of the system clock is and applying that to the net list. The thing is, is that each component has its own conception of the net list. And this is mostly just for compression reasons um, so that the models can get the bits they want faster. So you apply all the pin values once to this bit mask, okay? And the models can read it or write to it. Because in here, the netlist data is stored as array lists and freaking hash maps and stuff. And that's just not very efficient to simulate most of the time. So it's, it's essentially just trying to speed it up. The, that means that those have to be synchronized though. But anyway, the reason that's important for the tick function is this really important function here, which I think we passed earlier. So that's essentially just taking whatever, whatever this component did. So if this is the oscillator, the system clock, then taking whatever that did and applying it to the net list, right? So it's listing all the nets that have changed and it's going to update them and setting those nets to certain values. Okay. And then now that we've taken the components outputs and applied it to the net list, we have to apply the net list to the other components inputs. So that's done here. And so it'll change all these nets. Now this gets, is where it gets a little bit more interesting because this is where we actually start scheduling stuff. Okay. So we can see this is the scheduling, the, a loop that schedules stuff. We have some complicated logic here. Most of this is just for optimizations. Uh, to make the, the simulator run faster. But basically, if we actually do need to change the component's values, then we're going to do so. But otherwise, we don't need to, OK? So we change the pin values. And then we say that the, the, component, um, the component is changed if we actually did end up modifying the values in the loop. And this is a very easy thing to check because these are bit masks. So we just need to see if the bit masks are the same or different than they were previously. So now we take all these changed components, right? Take the model, right? So thing is a model applies to that type of component, not to a individual component. So update the pins on specifically this component. This is another thing we can get in. I, I, don't know if I want to get into, I guess I probably should, but basically the way that the chip store memory is through this um, array of in, no, where is it? Here, this uh, 2D array of integers. So that allows the chips to have memory, right? Simulating their latches and such internally. We wind up with a delay. How much, how long did it take for that chip to run? We open up a random chip. You can see that it returns the delay nanoseconds of that chip. So there you go. And then finally, 
we can cue the component propagation. So we've done all these steps. Now we have to do a queue. And so this is where the scheduling is, is kind of finally done. It's figuring out what pins on this component have changed and what nets that needs to change. And so it adds it to the simulation queue to change, uh, change the nets themselves, right? So if we go back to tick right here, it queued onto this when any component changes, and then it pops it off. Then we change these nets from whatever values they need to be, and then we apply the nets to components again, which is the same thing uh, we did up in one of these functions. Um, but basically, basically what this is doing in short is it's, it's seeing how the components have changed in the current tick, and then it cues those changes according to the propagation delay of that ship, right? And each tick either pulls a, uh, gets something off the queue or simulates a system clock. And this is just for listeners that need to understand what's going on in the simulation in real time. So there you go. Um, that's more or less how the simulator works. If you understand VGA or you understand serial communication or anything like that, it shouldn't be too complicated to understand how some of the tools that I used work. Um, the rest of it is kind of more straightforward and, and all that, but um, there's a lot of, of simulators that could have implemented, you know, sort of a time step mechanism, and that's, that's not actually what this is. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you later. Feel free to use this and modify it. See ya.